Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. All of our Baltimore Positive podcasts can now be found out in our podcast audio vault, brought to you by our friends at buyatoyota.com. Still coming together after 29 years and uh, bringing it from WNST over to baltimorepositive.com. We appreciate their support, as well as our friends at Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. I'll be getting the tasty fried chicken this week, uh, sitting at home watching the game on TV. You know, usually when I'm down in Tennessee, uh, I run into a whole bunch of friends of mine in the media. Many of them knew Barry Trotz from the Predators days and our uh, fang fingers and all that stuff. Teresa Walker's been covering sports for the Associated Press there uh, going on a couple decades now and uh, wins Sports Writer of the Year awards. I don't have any plaques behind my wall and I usually get her on on the phone, and we talk, and we say hello in the press box, and usually have pretty nice cookies and decent barbecue spread there in uh, Nashville when I come down there. But, you know, the Zoom thing allows me to, like, stretch out and say hello to everybody and get into the den. Like, you got a whole, like, bobblehead thing going on in there. I'm room rating you right now, Teresa. Well, that's the thing. I've got two options here. I, I could slide over and show some of the awards that are on that side of the wall, but, you know, behind me I is – like up on the wall, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, the first story I did about the Oilers, uh, now Titans, in July of 1997 when they first arrived in town with the moving trucks. I mean, I talked to Jeff Fisher at Tennessee State University with boxes all around the room. Well, they, they worked out of trailers, didn't they? I mean, I, I was at the game at the Liberty Bowl <coughs> in 97. I actually found the pictures recently. Uh, Jermaine Lewis is, uh, is a Facebook friend, and I found a picture of he and I because we're both short. And I sent it over to him for back in the day in the empty Liberty Bowl there. And then they came over and they played at Vanderbilt. I remember Eric Green played tackle in that game because the Ravens had, it had a body bag. It was an awful game for them. And uh, I remember Jimmy Schwartz on the other side of the ball for that. But, you know, through all these years, this rivalry and all that, I mean, I look over your shoulder, I see Steve McNair there throwing the football, right? So this thing, and and you know I was a huge Houston Oilers fan. I always kid Blaine Bishop about that. And, you know, anybody, John McClain, anybody that goes way back in the day with the Oilers. But, um, you know, this rivalry and this thing and whatever it was, for a number of years I was checking in with you guys and, three quarterbacks so you had none and the coach is out and the owner and his daughter and all this stuff last year this beating that you put on a 14 and two team um you know the the, the titans ravens thing still gets stirred up and now the ravens sort of limp into this game this week this is an interesting rivalry for two teams that aren't in the same division very interesting. Lots of history between these franchises. I was at that Liberty Bowl game when that was the least attended game that year, 16,000 plus. You could hear the Mid-South Fair next door was almost at times louder than the football game, which, you know, I might add, I've mentioned a few times this year because it's great prep for this year when there's been no fans or little fans. You know, the Titans have been allowing fans uh, October and November. They had up to 14,000 at their last game Thursday night a week ago. Uh, against the Colts and so you know now there's not going to be any fans for this game in Baltimore but you know guess what it's not the first time these teams have played with very few people around so uh, it's going to be very interesting but you know these are you mentioned the the Ravens coming in here skidding and we saw that monsoon in New England that they were playing in well the Titans are skidding as well they they won five straight to start the season and right now they've lost three or four so they're trying to figure out how to put you know get back on track uh, as they were earlier this season at one point they were like the third highest scoring offense in the NFL they've slipped to around 10 or 11 right now you know, you mentioned that Liberty Bowl thing. I'd love to pull that picture up. And I, I can actually do that in the new world here. I should be a little bit more adept at doing that. I might grab it before the end of the segment. But I, I was at that game, that, and I went out on Beale Street the night before drinking these big foot soaker beers and, and doing our thing, eating barbecue. And we went down to Graceland. And I remember Peyton Manning, was. we went to the casino. And, and that day, that game, I swore – I would never be in a game with less people. Same thing you said. But also that day, it was, it's startling 25 years later to realize how few people were there. I mean, like, I could tell people there was, like, nobody there. When I say it felt like there were five or 6,000 people in that stadium that day. It really did. It absolutely did. And it's like I was talking to uh, the Oilers that next week. Uh, you know, how weird was it to have so few people in the stands? Because like, they flew in for those games, right? They didn't train there. 
Correct. No. Yeah, that's what that was the fun part. They played in Memphis, but they did all their training in Nashville, and that's where they had some of the trailers. They were at the back of a medical building, and their locker room was inside the building, but they had some trailers, the media trailer. We were in a little trailer off to the edge of the field where they practiced. It was just it was just crazy. They were making do, shall we say. And while the players were flying to and from games, their family was driving on I-40 down and back. It's a long, miserable drive. No matter matter when you make that drive. Yeah, I, you know, all these years later, and I guess for Nashville growing up into this sports town, into more than the honky-tonk place and the Hall of Fame and your country music awards, I mean, all of that, that it has to offer. This is the weirdest time ever, right? Because Nashville's all about come on in. Come on in. You know, we, it, it is, we, we, you need to be here. There's an event here. There's a thing here. It's about gathering people. Um, you know, Baltimore, okay, I live downtown, and I mean, everything's about gathering people. But the whole thing that brought Nashville into the light here uh, in the time when the Predators came to town and there was nobody downtown and, you know, I'm hanging outside the bar three doors down and, you know, there's just nobody there. And now those are all second level, third level all of that build out. How's Nashville doing? Not well. I mean, like Martin's Barbecue, I talked to him in August and he was hoping that the Titans would get to a point where they could open their building to 50%. Uh, the last game, it was open to 21% capacity. And, and when I, last I talked to him, he wasn't planning on reopening his restaurant, which is on 4 South of Broadway, uh, until they could get to at least 50%. Why? It just, you're not getting the business to make it worth the while of opening up the building. So, uh, you know, you, you go down Broadway. I actually strolled down Broadway with some friends at, from out of town at the end of August. And there's people there. But it's just, it's, it's in, in, yes, it was a hot day, but it's not Nashville. Usually, you know, you have a hockey game on a Tuesday, Thursday night, you come out and Broadway's just jumping, you know, from one end to the other. You're not seeing that these days because, uh, you know, people, either people don't want to go out or they're being reminded to wear their masks when they are out. And it's just, 2020 is a very tough time and Nashville has really taken a hard hit. Teresa, I went down to Houston for nobody and sat on a roof in an empty stadium uh, in week two. Then I went to D.C. and Philly, and they let a handful of people in Philly. We let a handful of people in here a couple weeks ago and not now. I'm not going to the home games. We only have one seat in the press box. Luke sits at the home games. I was doing the road games. I've stopped. You know, I, I didn't go to Indy. I didn't go to New England the other night. My, my buddy JT the Brick sent me a text at one in the morning. He's like, did you go to that? I'm like, no. He's like, good call. You know, and I'm like – uh, but I miss it, and, and I, I miss the people. I miss the players. I miss the beat. Um, I think for anybody who's been doing this as long as we have, you and me, I, I, you know, you cover all the sports down there, and, you know, knowing all the coaches, all the teams, all that. To have to work on Zoom, I, and I've said all week, all these interviews, and, I mean, usually my Wednesday's built around going out to Owings Mills, spending time with coach, saying hello to players, seeing the visiting media, all that the thing that's that's been my life the last 25 years that I love doing so much these zoom things are like a hostage video man this is this is no way to cover sports Oh, no. And then somebody always uh, has a, a connection issue and can't get their question out and you're trying to be polite. Uh, it, it, you know, and then it, this is the time of year particularly training camp. And now, you know, as you're into the meat of the season that you'd like to be able to go talk to some of the other players, you know, the guys that aren't being served up on the Zooms, that aren't the guys at the banner on a Wednesday and Thursday. You want to go talk to, you know, maybe the fourth wide receiver and just get a different perspective or tell a different story. We can't do that that because you know tomorrow when the titans make people available it'll be ryan Tannehill, it'll be a second player a third player and then there'll be three players on thursday two to three players on friday that's it nine players in the span of a week when you could go into one locker room session and talk to 10 guys in one 45 minute period it's just it, yes we're all having to do this in a much different fashion and it it, it is yeah, we're grateful to still be working and be able to do something, but it's uh, it's not what we're used to. So, yes, none of us, anyone in sports who thinks that we're not rooting for normalcy to come back as soon as possible, you're crazy because our jobs have changed dramatically this year. Well, I mean, just them getting to the field's been an issue, and I have expressed deep concerns that they get to the finish line. And baseball did it, hockey did it, basketball did it, the Masters did it right now. 
how they get to the finish line here, bubbling up, but I mean, you were in the epicenter in the beginning, right? And, and the Titans were portrayed as being sloppy, and so were the Marlins on the baseball side. But, you know, as we get in on this, and we didn't have Marlon Humphrey last week, and the Browns aren't practicing together, and uh, you know what? The integrity of all of it, I don't want this to turn into the Eddie Fainer All-Stars, you know, have this turn into an exhibition season. I mean, I felt like the baseball season was a little bit more of a tournament than a season. I'm worried about January. I'm worried about the, the, the COVID and, and not bubbling up. I mean, if they want to move them all out to Vegas and have them live in a hotel and go down the street and play, that seems to be the way hockey and basketball pulled this off. You, if you have an outbreak in January, even into December where there's no bye weeks, you know, it's already bad enough that Drew Brees isn't going to be a part of this for a while and guys are going to get hurt and that's the game. This is contagious and knocking out franchises um, would really – it would damage the integrity of it for me. Well, that's why the NFL is being so crucial on these protocols. You know, they, that's why they, when the Titans had their outbreak, the NFL came in, they reviewed all the video, they talked to everybody from, you know, players to staff and other personnel and, you know, to see what went wrong, what can we do? And they keep adjusting the protocols, trying to, you know, close the doors, so to speak, to, to keep it from getting in but it remains playing football in a pandemic. So, you know, they, they release every Tuesday the, the amount of positive tests over the last week. And, you know, it's become more of a dribble. The Titans put another player on the reserve COVID list yesterday in a linebacker, you know, so it, it's becoming almost routine at this point. As long as they can play though, uh, you know, they're gonna keep playing. The challenge will come if they have so many numbers. We've seen it in the SEC, eight games have been wiped out in the Southeastern Conference right now, rescheduled and postponed because of COVID outbreaks, it just feels like at a certain point it will hit the NFL. But they've spent an awful lot of money and they're spending an awful lot of time trying to make sure that they can play, trying to preserve the integrity of the season. So we're just going to have to wait and see. They keep plugging along. The fact that it's, what, week 10, 11 is kind of amazing at this point in the NFL season. Uh, yeah, it is. It's been remarkable. And now, you know, we're having governors issue all sorts of orders. We have Thanksgiving. You mentioned these cops. College is playing or not. I mean, I never thought they should have played. I think it's absurd. I think it's sort of absurd to send kids off to college and then bringing them back at Thanksgiving and sending them back again. I mean, I, every scientist would have said this was a little crazy, but I think we're starting to get into a little bit of a maze with the NFL where um, you keeping these guys safe week to week in their respective cities is going to be a challenge. Teresa Walker here. She is Teresa M. Walker, AP pro football writer, covering all things down in the Music City. I can't wait to get back down there and hit that Monel's. I, mean, I just want to sit at the table of Monel's and have people pass me grits and pass biscuits. I want to be able to do all that. I feel like I'm so far away from all of that. I just want a good Indian buffet, you know, a Thai buffet, something like that. And I know all that's gone, but uh, having football back on a weekend at 1 o'clock on a Sunday, there has been a little bit of that that's been comforting, right? Absolutely. There is some normalcy. I mean, I go to a football stadium. Shoot, the Titans have had uh, five home games in the last six weeks. I mean, I've been, you know, it's become routine. And the, the Titans press box, you know, they, they hand you, it's different. You know, they hand you a, a, your container of food. You go sit and eat it. They've got plexiglass there in the press box between me and my other people. If I need to talk to somebody beside me, I got to kind of lean back away from the plexiglass. It's, you know, it's, but, but when they kick it off, it's football, and I'm writing about how they're going down and scoring, what the defense is doing, how well T Derrick Henry's running, and that for that, m that brief period of time, there's some normalcy. So I'll say this, thank God for the NFL this season. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel the same way, and, and again, missing the games, not getting on planes, whatever. I'm glad that we have this. I'm glad we have this entertainment. Now, about the injuries and about no Calais Campbell and about no Brandon Williams and getting run over by Belichick and Cam Newton. That wasn't fun the other night. Um, worried about Derrick Henry. Certainly what happened with the Titans back in January uh, is still in the head of the Ravens. Now the Steelers are undefeated. The Ravens, after this game on Sunday, go to Pittsburgh on Thursday night, uh, apparently to curdle my eggnog that's going to go with my turkey next Thursday. This is a really rough patch for the Ravens right now at 6-3. and three and the injuries are starting to pile up. What are we going to see for the Titans? Because they haven't been very good. They, Like I said, yes, they've struggled. And here's the thing. The one piece that has worked for them on offense, Derrick Henry. You know, So even in the loss to the Colts, he still had 100 yards. 
So, and you know, kind of wondering why weren't you using him a little bit more at certain points in the game? Uh, it feels like they've got to turn to Derrick Henry, particularly against this team and with the missing pieces in that Ravens line. Uh, how can you not just hand it over to, uh, to Derrick Henry over and over again? One thing that's been bothering the Titans, there's been too many drops in the last couple of games. Uh, so, you know, A.J. Brown led the rookies in receiving last year with 1,051 yards. He's had some customary drops the last couple of games. So uh, Anthony Ferkser, you know, Cleef Raymond, I know Ravens fans remember him. Jonu Smith from that game had the incredible catch. Those are all guys that, you know, they need to – They I, Taylor Lewan was lost in the, in the overtime loss to the Houston Texans, and it feels like since then they haven't quite been what they were. Uh, but they've got to find a way to make this work because, you know, let's face it uh, – they are just a step out of the division uh, race in the AFC South. They're, they've got everything to keep playing for right now. I'm looking at all those Predators bobbleheads up there. I see, I see Eddie George over your shoulder up there. Uh, no Al Del Greco, though, right? I mean, we, 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 we still have the visions of Al Del Greco. You guys have had a tough time with kicking this year, right? I mean, the Goskowski thing and uh, obviously a long you know, situation there with Rabel, but – Kicking's been an issue. That's one thing we haven't had a problem with. I mean, we got the best kicker on earth here. Kicking issues started last year when they went through five different kickers last season, and they had the worst by far kicking percentage in the NFL. They were at 44.4% a year ago. Goskowski's at 60% this year, so he's better than what they had last year. But, I mean, this is a guy who's a four-time Pro Bowler, and he comes in, and he, he's struggling between the 40s. You know, he's like six of seven from 50 and beyond. But, you know, anything between 40, 49, he's really been struggling with. And now the woes are spreading throughout their special teams. They've used three different punters in the last three games. Brett Kern, their three-time Pro Bowler, is on IR with a wrist injury. Uh, they went with a guy, Ryan Allen, uh, two weeks ago against Chicago. And then they switched and went with a guy they just signed. A guy who worked out and after he, he was delivering packages for FedEx, <laughs> Trevor Daniel, and they comes works out, they signed him to the practice squad, and then they promoted him for the game against the Colts. He shanked one for 17 yards, and then he had one blocked. So, you know, they're struggling. They've also switched out their long snappers. So it's like there's just a lot of moving pieces and special teams for them right now and a lot of problems. And they've got to they've got to, you know, to use their phrase, tighten up their blocking coverage because they've been there's just been too much penetration, putting too much pressure on whoever's back there at punter the last three games. So I'm very curious to see who they spin the wheel with and choose to go with on Sunday. Well, I'll tell you what, I hope there comes a time when uh, we can take the mask off. I can come back down there for a show, you know, trying to get my father-in-law down to that little seating bowl thing that they built down there in the city where, you know, Cheryl Crow's playing or something like that. But, uh, you know, we'll come down, get some Martin's Barbecue with you down there, take a walk on Broadway and uh, reminisce. And, you know, we, if we could just put these teams back in the same division, then, you know, that'd be hell for the NFL, right? Oh, I think everybody would love it. But, uh, you know, right now the Ravens have got to be pretty ticked at the NFL. They've got this team coming in and then the Thursday night game. Uh, the, the, I mean, the one game I'm looking forward to on Thanksgiving is going to be Steelers-Ravens. Uh, two thumpers in a row on short rest. Ravens aren't going to be happy in this game, and they shouldn't be. Well, Teresa, you stay, uh, stay safe there. And, uh, you know, I, 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 as long as the stadium opens up, you get to get out and watch some football. Luke will be at the game here this week. We go on a, a crazy little – we have a month we don't play at 1 o'clock on Sunday. We, we go with a Thursday night schedule, and then we go to Monday night out in Cleveland, uh, and then we'll settle things down with Jacksonville and the Giants toward the end of this thing here. Big game against Tennessee Titans. Teresa, always a pleasure checking in with you. Hey, you know, I, I don't know if I asked you last time, you got any Barry Trot stories you want to share? Trotsy and I shared a, a couple of text the other day. I haven't had him on a show in about a year and a half since he first went up to, to, to the island. Uh, the, the hockey thing's been so fractured. I know you love covering the Predators, right? I do, and it's been forever. I mean, it, it, this year has been so weird. I left a Predator game on a Monday night, and 30 minutes before a tornado hit downtown, Na or well, just just uh, near downtown Nashville in March, went across the state, did a ton of damage, and then you know a week or so later, we had COVID shutting everything down. So it's just been bizarre. I haven't done much hockey at all. But there's one tr tr Barry Trot story. Uh, Pete Weber, actually, the play-by-play -play guy, he shared it today on social media that they were at a, a function and there was a, there was a football sign by Mike Ditka that Pete was trying to bid on and Barry Trotz outbid him for it 
and then gave the ball to Pete Weber. So that's trust. just one of the nicest guys in the world. You know, and, and every time I bring it up, the person I bring up Barry Trotz's name with smiles. So that's good. All these, I don't have that. You know, I don't leave that impression on everyone. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Teresa Walker. You can follow her, Teresa M. Walker. Hey, promote the AP app. I, I know you wanted to promote that. Tell everybody how to download that. Absolutely. Go to your smartphone and go to apps, AP News. It's free. And you can follow all your NFL news under there, under sports and under football. It could not be easier, and it's all free. Do I get Dave Ginsburg too? Uh, you could get Ginsburg, Bonus. baby. Absolutely. Yeah, all right, there you go. All right, good, good, good. Shout out for Ginsburg there. I'll, I'll give him a shout out on Facebook as well. Uh, we exchange recipes from time to time, you know, so it happens. Teresa, I appreciate you. Take care of yourself down there. I'm sorry uh, we're not visiting, you're not visiting, but at some point, I, I promise – I'm not done with Nashville. You let that let everybody know down there. I'm not done. All right, I'm coming back. Good. Every Nashville wants everybody to come back as soon as we get through COVID. I even missed the airport. <laughs> See you soon. There she goes, Teresa Walker. Teresa M. Walker out on Twitter and at the AP covering sports for three decades down in Tennessee for the Associated Press. You can find us. Uh, out at Baltimore Positive, anytime, anywhere, and of course, all things at WNSD now uh, still available. And bigger and better than ever at BaltimorePositive.com. Our friends at Tahark are going to be shipping ice cream out. I'm going to be telling you about that next week for the holidays. Deep, deep discount. $15.70 off the eight-pack delivered to your door. Hand-packed eggnog, peppermint bark. We're talking about sweet potato casserole. Delicious stuff. Taharka, local, serving up social change, and incredible ice cream. And uh, we're going into business with Taharka next month. Going to sell them some ice cream. They, they've told me if I get 250 orders, we can have a Baltimore Positive flavor in the spring. I'm looking at peach cake is what I'm looking at. Nessa Baltimore Positive reaches me. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Snapchat and Instagram and anywhere you are on your mobile device at BaltimorePositive.com.